Okay. Show me. Hiya guys, welcome back to the Dutch Sheet channel. Thank you very much for tuning in. And in this video, I'm gonna answer a frequently asked question. <laughs> yeah, now uh, you know that a YouTuber is desperate <laughs> when he starts doing, or she, starts doing Q&A videos, right? What am I going to do videos about Q&A? So, no, I'm not doing, gonna do q and A. I'm just gonna answer one question I get a lot, and that question is, Dutch RC, what is your favorite quadcopter, your favorite FPV quadcopter? A legitimate uh, question, I think. I do fly a lot of uh, quadcopters, and uh, what is my favorite? Now, we are approaching the end of 2018, so I thought it was appropriate to um, tell you what my favorite quadcopter was for 2018. Now, I fly a lot of quadcopters, different sizes, and I couldn't really pick just one. So I've come up with my top three quadcopters of this year, and I still fly all three of them. As you probably know, especially if you live in the Netherlands, um, I often sell off uh, the products I review. Um, I simply don't have the time to uh, keep flying everything I re review, right? That makes sense, I hope. Uh, but, uh, well, these three I haven't sold because they are my favorites. Okay, let me give you a quick roundup of the three I uh, favor. From small to big, this, uh, you will recognize it. Oops, some grass on it. This is the LDARC, uh, previously known as King Kong, uh, the ET series of quadcopters. This is an ET-115, it is also available as an ET-100 and an ET-125. So this is the middle version, the middle size. And uh, this is a V1, yes. Uh, so this one isn't available anymore, but the V2 is very similar. The V2 has a few improvements over this one. And uh, actually, let me get into that when I give you a, a close-up look at this quadcopter. My second favorite, well, not second favorite, but the second in this, this video, is the Transtech Lightning. This is a 3-inch quadcopter, a Stretch X quadcopter, as you can see. And I've reviewed uh, quite a few, as you probably know, 3-inch quadcopters this year. And this is my favorite. It is very powerful, fast, which are two separate things. And uh, it is very sturdy. Uh, the sturdiest I've... It also has grass on it. The sturdiest I've come across this year. This one, uh, this 3-inch this quadcopter flies uh, most like a 5-inch quadcopter of all the 3-inch quadcopters I reviewed. Close-up look in a second. And the third one, and definitely not the least of them, you will also recognize this quadcopter. I've done quite a lot of uh, videos on uh, these quadcopters. I have a slew of them. This is the Gap RC KHX5 Elegant. Gorgeous quadcopter. Yeah, it's a bit obscured by all the straps, I know. But, um, well, this is uh, one of my self-built versions. And um, I'll have a link to the ver first video on this quadcopter and you'll see a, a roundup of all uh, the parts I've used in this quadcopter. I'll put a link uh, there. There. And um, have I changed anything on this quadcopter? Yeah, I've changed the FEV antenna. Uh, originally I had a TBS Triumph on it and now I've got a Foxeer Lollipop on it. Um, is it better? Uh, it's simply something I'm trying and this works, works well. Yeah. Okay, let's have a close-up look at all three of these quadcopters. So, the LDARC ET-115. And again, this is the old version, the version 1. Uh, by now you'd uh, definitely want the version 2. I've got one on the way, so in, uh, well, hopefully a couple of weeks uh, I'll uh, do a comparison. 
And is this one perfect? No, <laughs> it's not perfect. It doesn't have an OSD, boohoo, yeah, and um, I'd definitely like to have an OSD and the new version does have an OSD. This one doesn't have um, smart audio either to set up your uh, VTX. The new version has smart audio, thank you very much. Also the camera, the stock camera in this version 1 was, uh, well, I've replaced it with a Runcam Swift and that's far better, a, a Micro Swift of course. And uh, yeah, with that it's a joy to fly. Now this uh, quadcopter has proven to be very very reliable, very sturdy. I've run this quadcopter at top speed into metal poles several times. I've crashed it on the street, into trees uh, and also onto grass, but well that doesn't damage a quadcopter of course. And these, <laughs> these are the stock, the first propellers. Uh, it did come with I think two sets of spare propellers, I don't know why. I've I've never used them. Yeah, so uh, if I'd uh, want uh, clean propellers I could use them, but uh, well, there's no need to. And just like on the new version, it has carbon fiber arms. They aren't super thick, but um, I guess these prop cards take up most of the of the grunt in a crash. Does that mean it can't be broken? Yes, I've come across people that uh, broke their ET uh, quadcopters. I haven't been able to and I've tried, trust me. <laughs> yeah, uh, so this quadcopter has uh, seen, uh, I'm not sure how many flights, at least a hundred. And it's completely stock minus the FEV camera. It even comes with a good LiPo, the new version uh, also comes with a good LiPo. So um, yeah, the, the thing, this one, the old version came with two or three, I think I'm not even sure, but several lipos and the new version comes with only one lipo. That's a bit of a shame, but it's uh, better in every other sense. Uh, it has a better camera, it has OZ, it has smart audio. So uh, yeah, I'm uh, very much looking forward to trying that out. So the Transtech Lightning 3 inch version, there is also a 5 inch version of the Lightning, I haven't tried that one. And there's actually a new version on the way of the 5 inch uh, Lightning. So uh, yeah, maybe I'll try that, that's obviously a racing quadcopter just like this one is. Uh, bar bottom slung battery. This quadcopter is very reminiscent of the AGLRC XJB145. You might be familiar with the AGLRC and this quadcopter is both faster and sturdier. Uh, the FEV camera is approximately the same but well th this quadcopter is better in every sense and I've actually tried to do a review video on this quadcopter. You might have noticed that I haven't done any videos on this quadcopter yet before this video. And I've tried to shoot a couple of uh, review videos on this quadcopter but, uh, but they always felt too much like a sales pitch to me. So yeah I'm sorry but uh, I yeah I like this quadcopter so much that uh, again it was uh, it felt a bit too positive uh, to me. Uh, yeah, so um, as you can hopefully see the FEV camera is very well protected in this 70-75 uh, aluminium uh, top, top structure. It has quite a lot of room in the frame. As you can hopefully see here is the stack, here is where the stack ends. So you've got all this room for your receiver and the VTX. The VTX is uh, just below this, this carbon fiber plate over here. And in between the stack and that VTX there's more than enough room for your receiver. I run an XM Plus receiver in this quadcopter. As you see it has a KX camera and I'm not completely sure what, which one this is. But it works, works well. I have uh, no complaints about this, uh, this camera. I can see clearly where I'm going uh, in, uh, well, in the woods or indoors uh, and obviously in uh, open fields. So is this one perfect? No, of course not. Um, 
It has an LED board at the rear, but that doesn't work anymore because I've got Betaflight 3.5 on it and it has an F3 flight controller. And as you might know with F3 flight controllers, uh, those don't have enough memory in them to run uh, the latest versions of Betaflight completely. So what they did is they uh, removed some less important stuff such as LED boards. So yeah, uh, the LED board does still work if I'd run it on, a, uh, on an older version of Betaflight. But uh, well, I'd rather have a newer version of Betaflight. Uh, also it didn't come with a battery, a battery pad. So yeah. I use a silicone slab underneath and that works just fine. Uh, what's very nice about this quadcopter is that the arms are uh, three and a half millimeters in thickness and that's more than on most three inch quadcopters. So this quad feels more sturdy and I haven't been able to uh, damage the frame. As you can see this is the original frame. And again yeah this quadcopter feels the most like a 5 inch quadcopter of all the 3 inch quadcopters I've flown. Which is uh, very nice of course, it's very powerful. If for instance you do a punch out and then point the camera downwards, uh, most 3 inch quadcopters don't have the momentum to keep on going upwards. Does that make sense? So if you do a punch out and cut the throttle, then look down, this quadcopter will keep on traveling up for quite a while. Approximately the same amount of time as a 5 inch quadcopter. So that's that's what I like about this quadcopter. I run it on uh, 4S uh, high voltage uh, LiPos. Uh, you can run it on 3S but uh, the, the, the base tune it comes with is uh, aimed at 4S and if you'd want to use this quadcopter on 3S you can. But you'd have to do some uh, PID tuning and to be honest I don't see the, the purpose. Why would you want to run this quadcopter on 3S? I don't, I don't know. So uh, just if you'd be interested in this quadcopter and you should because it's a very nice quadcopter. Uh, yeah, just run it on the 4S and you'll be happy. And it runs on uh, Gemfan, Flash, 3052s I'd say, yeah. And uh, not the most sturdy of propellers, but um, they do perform well. And last, but definitely not least, my self-built Cap RC KHX5 Elegant. Now, uh, as I said, this is a self-built quadcopter. Well, self-built, uh, self-assembled quadcopter. If you don't like building quadcopters yourself, this quadcopter is also available as a pre-built, even with a receiver. Uh, yes, it is an uh, Eversky receiver. Uh, it is also available without a receiver if you fly a different system. And uh, actually I'll have a link uh, up here to my review of the, the pre-built version of this quadcopter. Now, is this one perfect? Uh, let me see. Well, um, I do have a little bit of interference in my FPV feed. Here, let me show you. And um, you might say, well, that uh, definitely looks uh, kind of horrible, uh, Mr. Dutcher C. Yeah, uh, to be honest, I don't, uh, I hardly see it in my FPV goggle. And it definitely doesn't bother me. So, I could probably remedy that by uh, putting caps on all four ESCs. That would probably help things. But again, I'd only be doing that for my videos, so for my YouTube videos. And um, I guess I'm just <laughs> too lazy <laughs> to do so. Because, well, again, it doesn't um, uh, provide any benefit to me while flying. This, is, this works just fine. To that I have to add that uh, the, the pre-built version doesn't have that interference. So yeah. Uh, one other thing and that's not really a gripe for me. But if I mount a camera. This is a Runcam 3 camera as you can see. This works fine. This works like a charm. 
right? The propellers don't uh, hit the camera or the strap. Works like a charm and I like the run cam cameras. And uh, as you probably know, uh, GoPro doesn't sell their cube cameras anymore, right? So yeah, uh, maybe you want to use a normal style of GoPro. This isn't the GoPro, but uh, well, a, norm a GoPro Hero would have uh, approximately the same shape, right? If I were to mount this, um, I'd have to probably use the strap in a different way. The, the props will hit the camera, yeah. And that's uh, because uh, this quadcopter has its arms up high, right? Basically all the electronics hang down from the top frame. And um, yeah, consequently the props are a bit high up and they will hit your camera if you want to run a regular style of uh, GoPro on this frame. So if you... Well, if you want to use a GoPro uh, style of camera, this quadcopter is probably not the best option for you. Uh, by the way, uh, this is a, uh, a different uh, Gap RC. I'm in the process of reviewing this one. This is a Mark II, also a freestyle quadcopter. And as you can probably see, this quadcopter is uh, a bit more conventional in the sense that uh, the arms are down low. So if you'd get this quadcopter and mount a normal style of GoPro, you wouldn't run into that problem, as you can, can tell. Yeah, um, okay, so more on this quadcopter in a future video. I haven't uh, done any flying with it yet, so I can't tell you if it's a good quadcopter yet. It probably is, but well, more on that in a future video. And there you go. That's a rundown of my three favorite quadcopters. Uh, if you have uh, any questions, uh, hit me up a comment down below. I hope this was uh, informative and at least it uh, answered one of your, <laughs> your questions. Again, uh, if you have uh, questions about uh, any of these quadcopters or uh, something else, hit me up a comment down below. I'll be happy to answer you and catch you in the next video. Bye bye.